So we're looking at improper integrals, and we're trying to think of some kind of alternative to the direct comparison test. The question at hand is, does the integral converge or diverge? And with the direct comparison test, there's a, a strict inequality that must, that must work. And if that inequality doesn't work, then the direct comparison theorem doesn't work. Here's an example of such a case. x over the root of x to the fourth plus 3x. We're looking for the area under this curve from 2 to infinity. So what happens here is that the plus 3x ends up not playing a role as x gets big. As x gets big, what dominates is this x to the fourth. So much so that we can um, drop off this 3x term. Now why would dropping off the 3x term cause the inequality to go that direction? It's because this left hand side has more in the denominator. If you have more in the denominator, then you must be smaller. And then simplifying the right hand side, you know, the root of x to the fourth is just x squared. And x over x squared is just 1 over x. But the issue is that the integral on 1 over x diverges. It's just a natural log of x from 2 to infinity. Um, and, and you let some variable go off to infinity. And, and it diverges. So what's wrong with this? Your function that you are integrating is smaller than some function that you, when you integrate it, you get infinite area. So if we have infinite area, then, then there's nothing to say that this function that you have is also infinite. All we know is that it's less than that. So your function is smaller than a function that has infinite area. It could have infinite area or it could not have infinite area. It could have finite area. So the direct comparison test needs to work the following way. There's two things. You're either going to be larger than a function that has infinite area or smaller than a function that has finite area. Then, then the direct comparison test works. Remember the, remember the picture here. If the integral under f is finite, then the integral under g will be finite. If the integral under g is infinite, then the integral under f has to also be infinite. That's direct comparison. And this is counterintuitive to that. The bigger function, 1 over x, diverges. So we can say nothing about the smaller function. But the good news is that we can recover this by using some other theorem. The theorem is called the limit comparison theorem. Here's how it works. You have your two functions, f and g, both continuous and both positive, and, and um, as long as x is some greater than some a. And what we do is we divide. We're basically going to compare the two functions. So we divide f over g. If you divide f over g, and look what happens as x gets big. Take the limit as x goes to infinity. If you get a finite positive number, then basically what that means is the one function is just some constant of the other function as x gets big. You know, if, if this is a 3, then as x gets big, then f is really just 3 times g if I was to multiply both sides by g. So it makes sense then that whatever g does, f should do and vice versa. So the integral on f and the integral on g should behave alike if this is the case. If, if when we divide them and take the limit, we get a constant doesn't have to be a 1. It could be any constant that is finite, positive. All right, great. So that's the limit comparison theorem. And it works when you get a constant dividing the f and g. Now, you'll be given just one of them. And then it's your job to go get the other. And so, like above here, the other is 1 over x. Now, let's go to the next slide and work it out. So in other words, this means that they either both converge or they both diverge. Make sure the one that you go out and get, you know what it does. If you know what it does, then you can then answer what the other guy does. Okay. All right, great. Let's take a close look at it. So we have this x over x fourth plus 3x. And we said that the x fourth is so much larger than the 3x as x gets big. I mean, you know, 3x is big. You know, x gets big, 3x is definitely big. But x to the fourth is just 
makes that so small in the, in, the, in, in the big scheme of things. And so we can drop off the 3x term. And we've seen on the previous slide, by doing that, we end up with 1 over x. And the inequality goes less than. We also know that the integral of 1 over x diverges, and so this is going the wrong direction for us to be able to use the direct comparison test. We have as smaller than one that has infinite area. So we try the limit comparison test. We divide the two functions and look and see what happens as x goes to infinity. If we divide by 1 over x, and it doesn't matter the order, you can divide by 1 over, you know, do an a over b or b over a, uh, f over g or g over f, it doesn't matter. So if we divide by 1 over x, the same thing as multiplying by x. So we end up with x squared. Now we need to consider this limit. As x gets big, the algebra that we need simply is to multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 over x squared. We take the highest power that's in the denominator. Ultimately, it's an x squared, not an x. And we multiply both top and bottom by 1 over x squared. This is uh, basically uh, first semester calculus here, finding this limit. And so by doing this algebra, what we do is we are able to make sure that the, const, the, the denominator goes to a constant and then force all the action to happen in the numerator by multiplying by the reciprocal of the leading power in the denominator. So let's distribute this across. Now, when we do it for this denominator, we're going to rename it. Okay, Right now, it's divided by x squared. But they can't interact. The numerator, that just simply becomes a 1. That's convenient. These two can't interact, though, because one has a root and the other one doesn't in the denominator. So what we can do is just rename x squared. Rename it to be the root of x fourth. And then we have a root in the numerator and a root in the denominator. We can combine them into one root. And then we can make them interact and cancel with each other and have x fourth over x fourth and then 3x over x fourth. And with the 3x over x fourth, x to the fourth, then that's going to cancel to be 3 over x cubed. Why is this desirable? Because we know what happens to 3 over x cubed as x gets big. That's going to go to 0. So the entire limit then will be a 1. According to the, I'm sorry, according to the limit comparison theorem, then what we have is that they behave alike. Well, since they behave alike, we said that 1 over x diverges. So ours must also diverge. As x gets big, essentially, by this limit being 1, as x gets big, these functions are essentially the same. f and g are essentially the same as x gets big. So why would, it, why would um, the one function diverge and the other one not? That's, that's the big picture there for the limit comparison test. No inequality to have to worry about going the right way. Let's see another example. 1 over the root of e to the x minus x. And just ask yourself the question, what doesn't matter as x gets big? Like in the previous question, e to the x will dominate the x from the denominator. This e to the x was so much larger than the x. I mean, x is big as x gets big, definitely. But e to the x is so much larger. So we could pretty much drop off that x term. Now be careful here. By dropping off the x term, what we are left with then is smaller. Why is that? It's because um, it's because we have something that is uh, a smaller denominator. In turn, it must be bigger. Okay. Now you have to make sure that what you end up with is something that you can integrate. So this guy that we end up with, we need to make sure we can integrate it. It looks bad, but if you think about the root as being the half power. And if you are e to the x and you're to the half, then that's just e to the half x. But it's in the denominator. Um, and so since it's in the denominator, we'll call it e to the negative half x. We'll call it x over 2. But all this is action is happening in the denominator. And so 1 over is 1 over, which is e to the negative x over 2. Still, we need to make sure that we can integrate it. And we can. Um, what happens is you end up with 2 
or actually a negative 2, the reciprocal exponent of the uh, constant in the exponent there, um, and then times e to the negative x over 2, better written as negative 2 over e to the x over 2, let b go off to infinity, and that's going to go to 0. And then the constant, just, you know, 2 over root e happens to be the answer. It's a finite area. This integral converges. The problem is that it, it goes the wrong way. The integral that we, the, 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 the function that we have is more than a function that has an integral that converges. It's going the wrong direction. If you're bigger than one that's finite, that doesn't say anything about you. You could be finite, you could be infinite. So we're going to try the limit comparison theorem. Okay. Divide the two functions. Doesn't matter the order, one over the other. One one over the other. And look at the limit as x gets big. So we multiply by the reciprocal. And they're both underneath the root, so let's put them underneath the root. As x gets big, our function is continuous, so we can bring it inside. And then once again, we find the thing that dominates in the numer uh, denominator and multiply by its reciprocal. Distribute that across. The numerator becomes a 1. The denominator becomes a 1 minus this x over e to the x. And then we need to consider what happens with that. So simply as x goes big, and the answer is that it goes to 0. Why 0? Well, just L'Hopital's rule. The numerator is getting big. The denominator is getting big. So it's going essentially to infinity over infinity. After one iteration of L'Hopital's rule, where we take the derivative of the numerator and get a 1, derivative of the denominator, get e to the x, then reconsider the limit as x gets big, we get 0. x gets big, e to the x gets big, 1 over something that's very large is going to be very small. So once again, we have a limit of 1. Doesn't mean that the limit is, um, doesn't mean that you're always going to get a 1 here. In our two examples, we did get a 1. What it means is that they behave alike, essentially. As x gets big, these two functions are so similar. By the limit being 1, they pretty much are the same function as x gets big. With that said, then, the limit comparison theorem says, well, they should behave alike. The integral on the one should be the, have the same kind of uh, result as the integral on the other. The integral on the one converges, so the integral on the one that you were given also converges. And what we're using is the limit comparison test. What's driving the need to use it is that the inequality is going the wrong way. In fact, some people start thinking about using the limit comparison theorem first because they don't want to have to bother with, oh, which direction does the inequality go? And so whichever way you feel is best, this video is on limit comparison test. I have uh, another video on the direct comparison test. I'm sorry, theorem. Limit comparison theorem is what this video is on. The other video I have is on direct comparison theorem. And then I also have a couple uh, uh, more examples on the direct comparison theorem. That's it for now. Thanks.